Welcome everybody to Live with Prima. This is Lee Moore Weber and I am going to be creating some a fun art journal uh, two-page spread today using some new Prima products. Um, for those of you that are new to the show, welcome. Um, we have a show every Tuesday. Um, I guess it's set, I believe it's, oh I don't even know anymore. Is it uh, noon? 11.30? Oh my gosh, now I forgot. Um, Sometime in the afternoon, Pacific Standard Time. I think it's, oh my gosh, now Carrie's going to tell me. I'm going to tell you the time in just a moment as soon as it pops up on my screen. Um, well, we have one on Tuesday afternoon, and then we have a show on Thursday evenings at 7.30. So there's always a different educator um, showing you the latest and greatest. Um, so be sure to tune in because it's super educational. Um, if you're a stone owner, Owner, sorry, I can't even speak. If you're a store owner, these shows are really great because it's, uh, you're able to showcase lots of these products to your customers. You can actually, um, I know there's lots of people that I know that watch my shows as a store owner and they showcase it in the store so that um, they, you know, the customers can watch it and see how these products work, which is really great. Um, so. Tuesdays is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time. There you go. Okay. Um, let's get started. I'm going to show you some of the things that we're going to use today. Let's. I'm going to show you the page that we'll be creating today. It's this right here. Sorry, the cameras will do the... Try to focus a little bit. So we're going to use lots of fun different products. Um, and I'll show you how to create this really fun page. What I'm using is, um, for those of you that remember, I tend to use this journal a lot. Do you guys remember when we did this a while back? You may or may not have, um, but lots of fun little pages in this journal. And what it is, it's an actual dictionary, an old dictionary, okay? And so all you need to do, though, you guys, you want to make sure, I've already done it for you, but you want to make sure that um, because these pages are really flimsy because they're old, you want to ensure that you're at least gluing two or three together so that they're nice and thick. Um, and then I use these fabulous clips. So because see, if I was going to create, this is kind of floating up. So this clip kind of keeps it down as I create and it, it weighs it down. And then again, on the other side, you want to ensure that you're gluing at least, you know, two or three together, which I've already done for us. So I, I wouldn't have to do it anymore. All right. So I'm going to show you the products as I go, because I find that that's a bit easier. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get started here and I'm going to use um, this clear gesso. It's the new clear gesso art basics, clear gesso. Really awesome. All right. Um, the reason I want to use clear gesso, uh, gesso is a primer for your surfaces, and so it provides a lot of tooth, um, which means the tooth will allow the ink to stay on the surface and not completely soak into the paper and dilute its pigment, okay? Um, and so the reason that I'm using just clear gesso is because I really want to keep the integrity of these words. Um, if I were to use just white gesso, um, I would be washing it out too much, and that's not necessarily what I want to do. Okay. So, um, and because like I said, they're really thin, it provides that other layer, that other primer that, um, will allow me to add more and more ink without totally getting a hole in the, in these, uh, sheets. All right. So let's go ahead and do that and prime it with a little bit of the clear gesso. And my bottle had kind of leaked so I'm just trying to find my brush here hang on I find my gesso brush there's my gesso brush which I use and what did I do here let's find my little pellet knife and poke that out not sure what happened here what happened here let's pull this off we don't need this bugger all right I'm just making a hot mess right just a hot mess Let's just put it on the paper instead of anywhere else, right? We can use that. No need to waste, right, my people? No wasted, no wastage required. Um, you can, of course, put it with a palette knife, um, but that's not really what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to take my gesso brush. And I love my gesso brushes. I have so many different sizes. They're that perfect, the perfect bristles. And um, they don't, you know, ruin my really good brushes. 
right. So I'm just applying a nice, nice coat. Um, it doesn't have to be super heavy. Um, it looks white, but it dries completely clear, and you can kind of hear the tooth that it has even when you apply it on. Okay, so not too thin, but definitely not too thick, okay? You, you do want it to dry right away. Okay, and spread it out really well. And the nice thing about Gesso is that it does create brush strokes on your page, especially if you use a brush like this, which is really cool because it just adds a little bit of texture, okay? And I'll go ahead and close this up. We won't need that anymore. It's a nice, what I like about these, you guys, I have to tell you, I really like the size of these. Nice, big tubs, okay? Um, and for me, that I go through so much of this kind of stuff, um, I really, really do appreciate the size. Okay. Just gonna dry this up and we shall get started on the other stuff. That's the thing about mixed media is sometimes, you know, drying is, is like watching paint dry, literally. And so um, these shows sometimes are tough to do because, you know, <laughs> there's so much drying in between, right? But try to do it as fast as possible for you so you don't get bored. But when I dry, it's kind of that perfect time to ask me those questions because that's when I kind of can look up at the screen and um, answer those. But Carrie is on there for you to answer any questions that you may have, okay? So there you go, it's really it's really nice and dry, so that's not bad at all. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the um, Art Basics Heavy Gesso. Um, I really like this gesso, it's really nice and heavy. It's got a nice thickness to it, as you can see. I can tip it and it's not going to uh, come down. At the same time, um, you'll see, it, it still has fluidity to it, um, but it's not fluid gesso, all right? So it's a nice heavy gesso that you can really uh, play with and I just really love it. Now, these guys, I get these cosmetic wedges at the dollar store. They're what, $1.25 for 28 pieces, can't go wrong. And you know, they're one time use, two time use, and you can throw them in the garbage, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sponge, and I usually like to use the um, this part. It's got a little bit more control, it's a little bit stiffer. This part's a little bit too flimsy. So I just go ahead and take a little bit. Do you see, see how thick it is? It kinda has like a peak, okay? Um, and then I just go ahead and I dab a little bit on my craft mat first. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create this little blotching, okay? Not through the entire page, just a little bit. Okay. And Gesso does have um, like a semi-transparency to it. So you'll still be able to see um, the verbiage on there, okay? Don't laugh, but I can't even remember what the other page looked like. So every, every once in a while, I'll have to look a little bit and remind myself um, what I did. Sometimes I do too many projects and I forget. All right, just like so, just a little bit up here. Yeah, it's a really nice heavy gesso. I got your text, Carrie, and that sounds good. Okay. Carrie, did you want me to announce that or not right now? Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit, just making it really nice and cloudy. Um, it's just really nice. Just 
layers. It's all about the layers, baby. Some places thicker than others, right? Just for fun. You can really create texture on some of the places. All right, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this now. So um, just so you guys know, make sure you don't um, leave us too soon today as we are going to have a giveaway at the end of the show, okay? So don't you go anywhere, my friends. Yes, you can totally use regular gesso. I just like the heavy gesso. I always have, just one of those peeps. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and just put this heavy gesso aside. All right, I have some new drawers beside me. It makes my life so much easier, you guys. You have no idea. All right, the next thing that we're going to use is this fabulous um, Elementals paper resist canvas. Um, I love these guys. You guys know I use this a lot. Um, there's so many different kinds, but another one of the new ones, we're not using it today. I could. Um, but look at this one. Is that not the yummiest? I love it. It's um, resist canvas as well. But just thought I'd show you really quick. Not that I'm using it right now, but this one I am. Um, and this one, the number is, number is 960636. Okay. I do have one that's already open. So that's what I'm going to use. Because we cannot waste, my friends. We cannot waste. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it with the scissors because I love imperfection right um, okay sorry just want to make sure that that text is okay just cutting a couple strips and I just want to show you we're gonna create some of the strips um, that go along here okay so we'll do that I'm not sure I'll need that many but that's okay we'll use what we can and the other thing that I want to grab is just any washi tape that you have around. Um, we all know that we're a bunch of hoarders. And if you say that you're not, I'm going to say that you're lying. Um, but any washi tape you have will work, right? That kind of matches whatever it is that you're working on. All right. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one that's a little bit thinner, actually. Just for fun. Just like that. Okay. And what I'm going to use to apply some of these down is gel medium so let's grab some gel medium and i actually love to use i like the heavier gels that's more my style um this is 3d matte gel okay so i i love it it can you see it's really thick um but at the same time it's really silky smooth so that's what i love about it um actually let's grab this brush and i'm just going to go ahead and apply these down with a little bit of gel medium. Okay. I don't mind that I get gel medium on the page because it just doesn't matter. Actually, we're going to put this one on this page. Just like so. Okay, I have to see. What did I do? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, just like so. And these ones will go about right here. to be super matchy matchy or anything. Okay. Don't have to line it up or anything. I might have to cut one or two more strips and that's fine. Um what's the difference? Well 
with the a fluid gel medium, um, do I have a fluid gel medium? Let me show you what a fluid gel medium looks like. Because it's all about personal preference, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you a fluid gel medium. It's not from Prima, but um, just so that you can understand the difference. Let's say, but, oh, this is blending medium. But, hmm. You know I have a million of them. Now, where? Oh, you know what? Of course, it's right here in front of me. Um, this is like, this is another matte medium, but this is, this is liquid text, and it's fluid. Can you guys hear it? Right? Like, it's a, it's it's more fluid. Um, I'm going to put it in here just so that you guys can see. It's more of a liquid, right? Um, so it's a little bit different, right? It does the same thing, but um, you I tend to have, if I'm doing like an entire page, like a decoupage, I may use this, um, but with this, with something like this, um, it gives you also dimension. Or I could, I would use this for, um, you know, the metal embellishments. You know how Anna Finnebar puts all her um, metal pieces. She uses this. Okay, um, so it, it just it holds really, really well. It holds a nice peak, so um, your pieces won't move around a whole lot, which which helps a lot. Does that did that give you something? I know. There's more to it than that, but um, I think for the applications that we are, we're using it, that's kind of the short version explanation, I guess. Okay, and I'm just gonna add it just like so. Now, I am gonna cut a couple more, but first I'm going to take a little bit of my washi tape and I'm gonna rip it up. Hang on. My fingers are all sticky now from the gel medium. All right, just like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yes, 3D gel is what you use when you use a stencil for sure. Or you can use modeling paste or something like that as well. Okay, for sure. Or heavy gesso. You can use heavy gesso. That would be really cool. Okay. Gonna add those pieces right there, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of gel medium right here because I don't seem to have enough, and it's kind of coming off. And let's cut that little end piece off because it's bugging me. There we go. Need a little bit more of these, okay, just like that, and this one can go up there. I do need one more, and I want to show you something that I love to do with my strip of this paper. I cut a little bit of a thicker one first. About that size. Okay, and then what I like to do is I take my precision scissors and I create kind of like a chevron pattern if you will. Not really chevrony, but maybe triangles, I guess. All right. And they don't have to be perfect. But they're kind of fun. Just gives it a little something. My scissors are a bit dull. I've had them for years. They're my favorite scissors ever. I have carpal tunnel in my wrist and it's the only one that I find that I can actually use and not have a crazy sore wrist at the end of my studio sessions. So that's what I use. So that's good enough. All right. And we're just going to add that about right there. Okay, it just gives it a little bit of interest, doesn't it? Am I doing it on the right side? That's the question. That's the ticket. Yep. I am. Okay. All right, just like that. 
and then let's do a tiny one just to have the page balance just a little bit right there. I'm going to cut one more really quick. Just a smaller one, not so big. All about balance, my friends. That was a weird cut. I don't know what I was doing there. That's okay. It's all good. Any other questions so far? I know Carrie's been answering like crazy. All right, perfect. All right, fabulous. Just like that. Now we're, I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit more of my washi tape. Just going to add it right there. And it just kind of breaks it up just a tiny bit. Okay. And do a little bit right there. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to throw out those tiny little pieces out and put my gel away so that it does not dry out. Let me just clean my area up before I get more stuff everywhere. I've been getting a little bit better about cleaning my area during my shows because as you've seen sometimes, I'm creating in this like tiny little area and I have no room to go, right? So pretty cool. I'm just going to give it a quick heat set to set that medium into the page. Any questions so far? Alright, um, the next thing that I'm going to do, um, let me, I was just thinking, I was going to do a little bit of a different step, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, actually I do need my gel medium still, and I am going to take, these are so much fun, these are um, the Mica Flakes, and the ones that I'm using are the Granite and the Frosted, okay, and they're just, they're just loads and loads of fun. And I kind of put them a few different places. So what I did is I grabbed my gel medium. I already put that brush in water. So I'm actually going to use a different brush for fun. Actually, I'm going to use my fingers. And I'm just going to apply it like so. Okay. And almost in an angle. That's how I'm creating, visually speaking, right? And then I'm just going to think of a triangle just so that your eyes um, always create in a triangle so that um, you create balance on your page. Right. Okay, so just like so, adding a little bit of gel medium. Sorry, I'm a little bit off frame. There we go. And now I'm going to take my mica flakes and I'm going to mix between, look how beautiful they are. Can you see them? And they're really, they're really tiny and thin, right? I'm just going to apply them just like so on my page, okay? And a lot of them are going to come off and that's okay. But I like to put a lot at first so that they kind of stick to where they're going to stick. Try not to use the finger that you just used for the gel medium because your finger's going to get filled with mica flakes, okay? And I just kind of get them in there, okay, into the gel medium. Ooh, there's a fun little rock. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's a bit of a big rock, okay? That's really, really fun, okay? So that'll stick to what it'll stick. And then I'm going to grab the next color. But first, I'm going to clean my finger off. I know, aren't they gorgeous? They're so, so pretty. And then I'm going to take this guy, this gray one. Just add that to there. Okay, and just get it to hit the spots that still kind of need. Some of these will get covered anyway with a little bit of ink, but that's okay. Just like so, just like so. All right, and then what I like to do, I just like one of those, and then it kind of takes away all of the ones that um, are kind of flying away. And I know it looks a little bit imperfect and a little bit weird right now. Um, the last one is granite, 
and the first one was frosted, okay? And as you can see, they're a little bit different granules, and I'm going to show you really quick. Um, can you guys see? This one kind of has really tiny little, and I know the camera may not focus very well, it's got tiny little flakes, whereas this guy has a little bit of chunkier, larger flakes, okay? A little bit different, but it's all the same thing. And it creates really gorgeous effects on your pages. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to give it a quick heat set because what it does is it kind of makes that gel uh, set a little bit. Yeah. And I do have these micas coming as well on the site too, Carrie. I know they're, uh, everything's on its way. All the new Prima stuff. But yeah, the clock faces are on the site. They're almost gone. Somebody bought like 10 yesterday or something. I don't know what they're making. I think I shipped it to South Africa or something. <laughs> All right. Just like that. And next, I am going to take something odd that I love. I'm going to take my jelly plate, okay? And um, I'm not going to use it in its traditional way. I'm actually going to use it as my, almost like a palette knife, I guess. Or no, palette knife, um, palette area, I guess. Painting palette, if you will, okay? And I'm going to use my Fabulous Resist Chalk Edgers, and these are the permanent ones. Um, and I'm going to be using uh, Teal Damask, of course, one of my faves. And I'm just going to apply it like so. It doesn't have to be the round jelly plate, but I do love the jelly plate. And the reason I use the jelly plate is I find that when I add the water, it doesn't spill everywhere. It almost has a little bit of a grip. Um, whereas if I did it on my craft mat, it would kind of flow everywhere, and I don't necessarily like that. So that is exactly why I'm doing this. I'm not going to use a pink quite yet. Um, and then the other one I'm using is Rock Moss. Okay, and applying it. These are so juicy. Do you guys see that? Um, what kind of washi tape? Um, the washi tape I used, um, I don't know the brand name. I know it's on my site, Carrie. Um, it could be all gone. It's super popular, but there's some that are just like it um, on the site for sure as well. Um, I It doesn't really have a brand. I don't know. I buy it from a wholesaler. Um... So I don't, I don't know. I can't answer that. But I know it's on my side there. Okay. All right, just like that. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water. If I've been having <laughs> troubles with my water bottle lately. It hates me. It hates me. All right, just like so. Now I've got this nice little pooling of paint. And I love to take my water brushes, so I have lots of them right here. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be using for this. And so just like that, and adding a little bit of paint and allowing it to drip. And what I love to do as well, so that I get more of that drippage, is I just add a little bit of water to the page. And it helps those colors flow a little bit better. Okay. And what I love is the way that they start going in between those beautiful flakes as well. Okay. And then I'm going to start mixing some of that color. So it creates that gorgeous effect. I love the color that these two colors create when they mix. All right. Just kind of playing along a little bit. I'm not covering everything, but you can can you see? The resist canvas now. So it's, oh, sorry, it's a little bit off. There we go. All right, you can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm just going to move this so that I can do the other side of the page. Okay, and we'll do that right there as well. And let's add just a tiny bit of water right there. <laughs> yep 
You guys are cute. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this. All right, just because we need it. Clean my brush off just a little bit. Just adding a little bit of that darkness in there. All right. Fun, isn't it? Subtlety, but it goes a long way. Don't you think? Need a little bit more of that green. Do you see how juicy these things are? Oh, I love them. I play with them all the time. I know I've used them tons in my shows because I really do love them. Truly. And you guys know me. I only use what I love. That's just the way it works. That's how my creativity flows, right? I wouldn't stray you. All right. A little bit more right here and we're done. Now I'm going to dry this up because I don't, when I put the pink on, I don't want it to mix and create a brown. What am I doing? Not putting water on. Drying this up. And it dries a little bit lighter. So I always add a second layer as well. Okay. Just watch when you're putting the heat gun that they don't um, burn, that your page doesn't go up in flames. Okay, so just something to watch. Um, just going to wipe some of that moisture off because it's easier if I'm going to add a little bit of pink. I don't want it to mix, like I said, and turn into a brown. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to use vintage pink. Okay, it's a little bit dark. I may mix it up with a little bit of blossom tree which I think is actually what I did use um, on this page originally. Yeah, I used Blossom Tree. Okay. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my brush and just mix it up a bit. All right. Just, oh yeah, it's a bit dark. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use the, this guy, this lighter one. Yeah. I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to wipe it off. I'm not sure why I grabbed that one, but it's not the right one. It's this guy. So then I add the other pink over the top. I just forgot. Just forgot. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm now adding a little bit of the pink. And you'll see why I chose these particular colors, because the collection that I'm using is, um, is uh, what is it called? Coffee time? Oh my goodness, what is it called now? Second, I gotta find it now. It's coming to me. It's called Coffee Break. Coffee Break, not Coffee Time. It's a Coffee Break. All right. Just add a little bit of water. It's just like watercoloring. All right. Create beautiful watercolor effects. Just starts to come together, doesn't it? Some places it can go darker than others. A little bit of water. And what's beautiful about these, like I said, they're permanent inks, but at the beginning, they really, um, they're really great for watercoloring. So that makes a huge difference. I'm just gonna add a little bit of my 350 because I'm adding so much water and not really allowing it to dry that well. It has a little bit of a harder time staying not bubbled. So the three or this three in one really helps. I'm adding just a little bit more, and I know on camera it's hard to see. Do they have the pumpkin spice lattes yet? I'm not a fan. They're too sweet for me. It's probably because I like just regular coffee, and I don't drink coffee with sugar anymore. 
So I, I used to really like them, but now last year when I tried that one, it was so sweet. I can handle it. I really do like the taste, but it was just too much for me. Um, I have a girlfriend that's so addicted to them. It's hilarious. Um, okay. Can you guys see that? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a quick heat set. move these around just a bit. They're just a bit thick for me. It's supposed to be a bit more subtle. Just flicking some of them off. There we go. It's a really big cluster here. That's better. Uh, let me repeat the chalk edger colors. Just give me a minute. I'm going to add a little bit more three in one, like I said, because I'm adding so much moisture. These puppies really love to lift. Okay. So you may have to do a little bit of surgery work here. I'm a little bit of a surgeon. All right. Um, let me repeat the colors. Okay. Um, as I have it all over the place, let's just add it onto here. It's called Blossom Tree. Um, rock moss and uh, teal damask. All right. Yeah. Okay. And I believe I have some left on the site. They kind of sold like crazy. I did a show with them, so I'm not sure how many I have left. But you can certainly check. Um, I'm just going to finish drying that up and we'll add more of those steps. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use um, a couple products that are non Primo products, but um, we don't always have everything right. So this is a uh, quinacridone magenta Liquitex like um, acrylic fluid acrylic ink. Okay. And I'm just going to add like, did you see that drop? That's how much I'm adding in because it's super concentrated. Okay. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the same thing, acrylic um, paint, fluid acrylic paint in the white. Okay. Just like that. And I'm going to take a brush. Usually I like to use a fan brush, but I'm just going to use any brush and that's fine. And I'm just going to mix it up, add a, just a tiny bit of water to make it fluid. All right. Do you see that color? It's perfect color now for the splatters that we're about to make that are these ones that you see right here on that page. Oops, let it, let it focus. Those are the splatters. Okay. We're just going to do those here in just a second. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and give them, like, do you see what I'm doing? Just splattering them up. It's not very fluid though. So let's make it a bit more fluid. There we go. You know me and splatters, right? Just has to happen. Just has to happen. Okay, just like that. And it'll dry a little bit lighter.
Liquitex in the dropper. Yep. Oh, I can smell burning. Yikes, carambas. Yikes, carambas. All right. So just like that, let me move this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and start a little bit of my stamping and stenciling process. And this guy right here, I love. And did I throw, I think I threw out, hang on a second, it could be in my garbage. I can't believe, I'm, I'm going through my garbage. Can you believe that? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Carrie, if you can tell them um, the item number for this, because I don't have it anymore. I put it in the instructions, but not, uh, I didn't keep it beside me. But anyway, I'm going to use this, uh, the pinwheel, I believe it's seven inch. And um, I'm going to use it with my heavy gesso as well. So let me find it. Where did it go? It's right here. Okay. So I'm going to pull that out as well. Again, I mean, not as well. And because it's heavy, I can create some fun little circles with it. And it doesn't have to be super thick either. You can do this with modeling paste, but that's not really the look I'm going for. So I want a little bit more subtlety. Can you guys see them? They're kind of fun, aren't they? And I'm actually not really doing the whole circle. I want the actual little circles. That's really what I care about. Okay. Can you see those? They're fun, right? Just like so, and let's do maybe a, like a couple right here. I thought I had some up here as well on my other, there. How's that? Like that. All right. And just make sure you wipe your stencils off whenever you're using gesso or modeling paste because they get pretty gunked up, especially ones like this that move. You don't want them to kind of get um, stuck together. Okay. So there's that. And I used heavy gesso, like I said, seven inch circle pinwheel stencil. Okay, good. Fry it up really quick. You got it. And you can see the circles. They don't disappear, but they get lighter, which is really fun. And you can make them really bubble if you get it up close. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, just a t um, the question is, did I use water with a little bit of Liquitex paint? I did, just to make it a little bit fluid. You don't really have to. I just didn't add a whole lot of paint. So you could just add more uh, of the white or more of the pink to make it more fluid. Um, but yeah, I did add water. just like that now I'm gonna take my stamps and um, also my graphite pencil so this you guys know already oh where's my sharpener right here I need to use my sharpener um what am I doing um you guys know this is my favorite pencil of all time um the Aquarelle Stabilo All it's what I use for my sketching um and I love it <laughs> It's the best because it goes over paper, glass, plastic, or metal. Okay. Um, and that's why I love it. So when I use lots of acrylic paints and lots of mediums and things, um, I don't have to worry about it not writing, um, which is really cool because acrylic paint is plastic, right? So uh, that's, that's just something to know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, and it's water soluble, which is really cool. And it's really dark. So I'm just going to go over some of my circles and make them a little bit more prominent on my page all right it's not perfectly dry but good enough and i may not do quite all of them i may leave some just halfway okay and just like so uh, 
and I'm t I was laughing the other day because I keep bringing these pencils in to the to the shop, and I swear as soon as they go up on the site, somebody ends up buying like ten at a time. It's like I kept laughing the other day saying, "You guys like eat them for dinner or something?" Because I cannot keep these puppies in stock. I think maybe it's because I like them so much. I made you love them just as much. It's pretty funny. Okay. So just like that. All right. And it makes them a little bit more prominent. But here's the best part. Are you ready? Um, I'm going to take... This is just what kind of makes everything pop. I'm going to take a, a thinner brush. And I'm just going to make them look at it a little bit darker. Do you see that? A little bit of water not too much because they do turn quite a bit quite dark and I don't want it to be crazy dark and I'm kind of blending with my fingers too to give it that gorgeous shadowy effect okay so you're kind of lifting a little bit of that color but like I said don't do too much because it's really really dark look at this one like you can see how dark they are so just caution. Light handed. It's the Stabilo All. Here, I'll show it to you. You see it? Stabilo All. Okay. Just like so. All right. So those are, can you see, those are my circles. They're kind of fun, a little bit more prominent. Now, um, what am I doing next? What am I doing next? Let's look at this page to remember. Some of these circles were really prominent, weren't they? Oh, yes, 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 yes. But I have to do some of the other ones later. Just thinking out loud. Okay. Oh, yeah, some of those are quite prominent. That's what I did. Some of them I made them really dark so that they would pop out of the page. And then I made little circles here coming out of the butterflies as well. Use your fabulous drawing skills, my friends. Okay, don't be afraid. Right, just like that. I could do this for hours. This is like my favorite part of um, our journaling is just doing all the fun little details and playing with my mediums and such. Okay, just like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let me dry it up because it's a little bit wet. No cheating. <laughs> I know. Am I supposed to go by memory of what I did? Oh my gosh. We'd all be hooped. I can't remember a single thing I do every day. I swear. All right. So now um, we're going to do a little bit of journaling. And I left my, my favorite art journaling pen upstairs. I'm such a bugger. But um, let's see if this one works. It's a 0.7. Yeah, that should work. It's not my favorite though, I have to say. How about this one? This one might work. And we're gonna do a stamping, so let me grab those. And we're going to use these as well. So we're gonna use the Epiphany stamp. Look at the stamp set. Is this not yumminess? So we're gonna use this guy, and it's 575762. Isn't that a gorgeous stamp set? And then we're going to use this ephemera by um, the co it's Coffee Break Ephemera, and it's five seven five eight seven eight. Okay, this is my leftover stuff. And the other thing that we're going to use is we are going to use this paper right 
for saving. You know there's more. They just decided to run away on me. But we're going to use this paper right here, okay, which is uh, Spread Your Wings, okay, which is from the uh, Forever Green collection. One of my faves papers. It's just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what else? Maybe a couple other things. Another stamp right here. One of the, um, I thought I had it right here. Put it on the side. Is it under here? A honeycomb stamp. Oh, here it is. My favorite Prima honeycomb stamp. Love this puppy. You guys know how much I use it all the time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use a just use any uh, permanent ink that you'd like. You guys know I like to use my Stamper's Big Brush Pen, but you can use stays on. You can use whatever you your heart desires, okay? And I just do my little rolling technique. Imperfect. Imperfect is perfect, right? That's how it goes. And I do the first, second, third uh, generation. Maybe I'll do a couple more. So you want to do some a little bit darker, some a little bit lighter, right? Okay. And I kind of roll a little bit. Just like so. All right. You can always go back if you don't like it all the way. And I'm going to take this guy right here. And we're going to play with it a bit. Move my brush a bit, turn it over, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm not going to stamp this piece right here. I'm actually going to use this scribbly line, and I don't know if you can see, but all the lines and stuff on here are made by using this guy, which is really fun, right? So sometimes when you look at a stamp, try to you know try to imagine it using it um, in other ways than just what you see on the page, okay? And that's why um, we do classes as well, and that's why, you know, we travel all around the world to um, bring you classes and get you to see how to use, you know, products in different ways that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, think of on your own, right? So that's why we do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the entire stamp. I think this is my first show back, um, at least with Live with Prima, since I was in Australia. I kind of forgot about that. So, it's kind of cool. And New Zealand. I always forget New Zealand, but it's amazing. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It just kind of starts to come together, doesn't it? So, I'm just going to stamp a little bit of it off, just to clean it off a bit. And I'm going to put it back. In my little spot and then with this guy as well I'm just going to use a little bit of it I just like some of those edges as you can see so again I'm just being selective about some of the pieces that I actually want to view all right because it's kind of it creates a really gorgeous grunginess on the page right it's a really grungy stamp and I love that I don't want the entire thing. I just want small pieces of it, right? Look at that grunginess. Can you see? That's hard to tell. I promise you it comes together in a little bit here. Okay, just like so. And then I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to use, again, just these pieces. So this is just a fun little way to show you, you don't have to use your stamps the way you think you should use them. Be creative about it. All right? And create gorgeous little borders. Okay. To some of you, this might be a hot mess. And to some of you, um, you know, it's a little creative outlet, okay? Art journaling, um, you know, I teach lots of art journaling classes. They um, are not meant to be um, about beauty. They're meant to be about um, experimentation and um, just how you feel, you know, and being able to just enjoy the process regardless of whether you um, achieve the 
effect that you want or not, it's it, the process makes a huge difference, right? And just being okay with however it turns out. Um, I think we're so critical of our work sometimes. And so doing something like this is extremely freeing. Um, not that I'm trying to get all sentimental because that's really not the whole point of the show. Okay, really fun little words right there. Okay, just like that. Don't want too much. And last but not least, I'll use this guy. Maybe we'll go about right there. See, I'm not cheating, Carrie. I have no idea where I put this stamp on my other page. I'm just doing it. Letting go. Do you want me to sing for you? If you say yes, I'll sing. You know I will. Should I do it? I can do it. I can do it. Let it go. Let it go. I bet you if I call Ava, she'll come and sing it for you. How's that? Should I call Ava? She'll come sing you Let It Go. Pam says, no, please don't sing. <laughs> oh, you're funny. I thought I had one more stamp set. What did I do with it? Didn't I show you? Did I show you two stamp sets? Did I not? Am I going insane here? I'm sure there was one more that I used in my class. Oh, yes, here it is. I knew it. This other one is 575830, and it's just a little bit of a script stamp. Um, and again, it's just more for background purposes or texture purposes. Okay. Just a bit. It just gives it a bit of texture. That's all. Okay. Don't go crazy on it. That's all we're going to use. All right. But I love the epiphany line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let me dry this just so that the ink, make sure that the ink is, doesn't move anywhere. And we'll start adding some of our embellies. Right? A little bit of our embellishments. There we go. And this is a really cool ephemera pack. And you, you open it up, but then this other little piece comes, and there's like little glitter, and there's like a little, I gotta show to you little um metal pieces sorry there's look at this little can you guys see this little teacup with a little spoon i just don't want to lose the pieces they're so adorable um but yeah this thing comes with lots of different things which is so much fun i'll, I'll just show them to you for fun as i go as i, as I choose mine because i can't remember it was this guy this hand this little um was it the teapot no it was a little cup this little cup could use this little cup on this one. Let's use a different cup just for fun. Just because we can. All right. Just because. And we'll use the. Oh, look at these glasses. They got all squished. Yikes. There we go. And look at. Oh, darling. It's coffee time. So, really fun ephemera, isn't it? Let's see some of the different ones really quick. Got lots of fun little things that you can play with. All right, that's that. Okay, give you a little a little preview of kind of what they look like. Oh, as as this thing goes flying. All right, um, so there's that, and then the other thing is cutting out the butterflies. I don't know where the other sheet of paper on this guy went, so we'll just use some other butterflies that are on here. How about this guy? Because it kind of matches. Okay, so we'll fussy cut this guy out, and I think I did two of them, didn't I, on this page? Yeah, I did. That one was kind of like a pink-ish. This is kind of purpley pink, so I think, but this one's nice too, so let's use this guy. And he's called Beautiful, so it's very fitting. I'm just going to fussy cut these guys out and maybe answer questions. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. That's really sweet. I love to teach. It really um, it brings me joy. It brings me joy to share, truly. 
I mean that. All right, so there's that. And where'd the other one go? Here it is. And we have some fun, exciting things that I'm going to announce, I don't know, in the next next week, I think. Um, something that's happening with, that I'm doing with Prima. So stay tuned. It's more for the U.S. people, so I'm sorry. For my international viewers, but don't worry. You international ones get me too, so don't worry about that. Okay, so we're going to put this one right here and then that one right there. Okay, so that's how it's going to go. This guy is going to go out right there. I can't even remember how I put them. Isn't that funny? How did it go? Okay. It's like this and like that. Like this and like that. Like this and like that. You can't see me dancing right now, can you? Oh, the beauty of a camera. I can hide. I can hide behind that camera. I was, I was pretending to rap, if you're wondering. Really poor at it. Relax. Just chillax, dudes. That's what I say to Ava all the time. Chillax. Take a chill pill. Okay. That says relax. And then I like to put the glasses kind of, you know, accentuating maybe the R. How cute is that? Okay, so let's go ahead and you can use gel medium, you can use uh, Fabri-Tac, you can use whatever you want to adhere these pieces. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use this guy because it's handy. Um, but gel medium works fabulously as well. And actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and take um, my, my brown, this guy, dry sand. And I'm just going to um, get him a little bit darker. He's a little bit too stark white for me. Okay. Needs to be weathered a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do that too. So this is dry sand. Okay. Too perfect. And that's not good. Remember imperfect is good. No, these things don't even show up. So I'm not even going to do it. All right. So something like this. little books and we'll go ahead. Did I do that one? I did. So let's do this guy right there. Okay. And now I have things all over me. Just like so. Look at the strings. Can you see? Look at, they're hanging like I'm mobile, mobile, mobile. Oh my God, I can't speak. I am slowly going crazy. I'm really just doing, um, I'm using this one because it's quick. This glue is quick for the shows. It's usually, um, if I'm doing this page um, on my own, I probably wouldn't use the three in one. I would probably use the gel medium because I don't care so much about time. But for the purpose of time, I'm using this glue. Okay. So, and then we'll just add that R right there, right there. How cute is that, All right? And I'm just going to get that glue adhered really well. All right. And... A couple things that we want to do is we want to journal a little bit on these guys. So what I've done is I take my journaling pen and I accentuate them a little bit. This is not my favorite. I've been um, sketching for product um, production. So I have all my sketching stuff upstairs, um, which leaves me with all my crappy stuff down here. But that's okay. It's close enough. And so... What I like to do is I like to kind of create like faux stitching. I love faux stitching. 
It's kind of a thing I do. Um, I don't even know if you can see that, but anyway, it's like little X's on here. And you don't need to pull out your typewriter, or typewriter, your um, sewing machine. Typewriter, what am I thinking? Seriously. And it just, I don't know, doodling and, and stitching and stuff helps. It makes it look a little bit grungier and more fun. This one is just not as dark, so it kind of drives me nutty. Um, my other journaling pen is quite dark. But that's okay. That's all right. This will work. This kind of works. Um, I would use the gel medium if, oh, sorry, let me rephrase. I, if I was alone, um, I probably wouldn't use the Fabri-Tac to put all the stuff down. Um, but for speed, that's what I would use. Otherwise, I would just pull out my 3D matte gel. Okay. That's, um, that's what I would do. Just kind of going around those letters so that they kind of pop out just a tiny bit. And what I want to do is I want to pull out a little bit of the brown tones that are on here to balance the page out just a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a little bit of my iced chai. This is from the Steampunk Collection, their gelatos. Um, and that's kind of what I used, you know, up here to create kind of that brownish effect. So all I just do, it's because they're water soluble, I just add and you can even just blend. You can just take your finger and it just lifts up. It's kind of like uh, dyeing this with tea, which is, what's it called? Ice chai, like how perfect, right? Um, so it's like literally dyeing your page with a little bit of tea without having to make yourself a cup of tea, unless, unless you want to make a cup of tea. Then go ahead and make a cup of tea, right? But we don't always want a cup of tea. So you pull out your iced chai. <laughs> okay, I drive myself crazy too. It's okay. If I annoyed you just now. Um, I just kind of put it on here as well. And then just take your baby wipe, wipe off whatever you don't want. Just kind of blend. Allow it to do what you want it to do. Okay, I just want to see, make sure I'm not missing any steps here. Oh yes, there's one tiny little step, tiny, tiny one, but that's okay. We'll do that in just a second. Okay, and then last but not least, I want some of those boo blues, some of those booze blues to be a little bit more uh, prominent. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of this on my craft mat. This is that um, teal damask. And I'm going to add very tiny bit of water, just like very little, because I want it to be a little bit darker than um, it was before. Where's those paint brushes I had before? Water brushes. And I'm going to go in there and get them a little bit darker, just a bit. And it makes that page pop just a tiny bit, okay, in some of those spots. I know if I move too much, it it does the weird camera trying to catch on, right? So I'm just playing with it and allowing it to drip a bit. But I just want a little bit of darkness in there. And last but not least, um, it needs a little bit of the black splatters. So um, the easiest way to do that, um, and my favorite is, let me go grab it just a second. And it's right here, and it's the Liquitex, again, um, acrylic fluid ink, or you can use India ink. Either way works, but I love this one so, so much. And I always have these little dishes beside me because I do this technique constantly. Okay. 
and I don't usually add a whole lot of water. Actually, I'm going to add, I don't usually add water at all to this, so I do use quite a bit, at least four or five drops, okay? And I'm going to use a fan brush for this, and I just need to find one. And really watch your stuff when you're doing black, because it gets everywhere. And tip up, okay? And... And I like the fan because it just allows it to spread properly, right? So, oops. Let me show you what we got so far. Okay, it's a little bit wet right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick heat set. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Too much water, so it did the weird watercoloring thing. Just going to pull it off, dry it, and do the splatters again in that, in that area. Need to. It might just look just fine. All right, my friends, I believe that is a wrap. That um, is a fun little art journal page that uh, we created. It looks just slightly different than this one. It, this one has a little bit more grunginess to it. This one has less grunginess to it. Um, I used probably less flakes on here than I used on here, right? So it just, you know, no art journal page is going to turn out the exact same, which is kind of the beauty of it. Um, and it's, like I said, it's all about experimentation, right? So let's... Um, Let's go ahead and do some, and I'm not going to switch camera because you guys know it, the camera thing isn't working today. I don't know what's going on, so um, let's go ahead and do announcements. But um, before we do the announcements, I think Carrie was going to do a giveaway. Carrie, you were going to do the giveaway or you want me to do the announcements first? Thanks, everybody. Yeah, it's all a personal preference, right? But you can kind of see too how you can mix different um, collections together, right? All right, let's do, um, should we do, where is she? Where is that woman? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Carla, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Uh, don't carry sending me. Okay, she's carry sending me a message. So I'm going to go ahead and do the announcements while Carrie does the giveaway here. So let me pull those up. Um, announcement number one is the next show coming up with Sharon. On September 2nd at 11 a.m. okay Pacific time and uh, we're, uh, she's creating art tags featuring the new art basics so kind of the same stuff that I used today like the gessos and things like that um, from the Finnabar collection okay and um, number two is something really exciting especially for all of my Canadian friends okay listen up Canadians especially in the East all right you Eastern people Carrie's going to be teaching classes in Kamoka, Ontario. I think that's how you say it. Is that kind of close to London, Ontario? I think so. I don't know. September 19th and the 20th at Scrappin' Great Deals. All right. Um, you got to check out her classes. It's called, um, Carrie's going to put it on the screen or maybe I can. Um, let me type it up. Let's see if it comes up. Oops. Um, scrappin'. Scrappin'. GreatDeals.com. You can check out the classes there, okay? And um, and you can click on the classes and register. All right. And then again, uh, <laughs> gotta move to Canada. I know, right? All right. And so, California Art Venture, uh, January sixth and seventh. Don't forget, twenty fifteen. So not quite this year, but next year. Uh, book your spot now as they're filling up. And, um, 
if you are a retailer attending CHA, this is a really great opportunity to um, to see some of the new, um, you know, new ways to use some of the new products that Prima comes up with. So definitely uh, go ahead to Prima Marketing Flowers Facebook page and uh, click on the events and then you can get all the info there. All right. Um, I think that's it for announcements. And so let's see here. Let's see here. Um, creating Sarah is the winner prize for Debbie Gregory's giveaway. Yay. So Debbie Gregory is generously giving away an altered clock and the winner is creating Sarah. Pretty cool. Hey, so that is it my friends for tonight i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording for those watching so for those watching the recording thank you so much for tuning in be sure to tune in um with live with prima twice a week with us have a great day Bye bye